Hi, Ian C and Oxus, with the support of the Hollings Centre, had the opportunity to discuss Islamic civil society with our academics and grassroots activists. Here are some of our findings and discussion ideas from our regional policy dialogue on Islamic civil society held over four days in 2021. Almost 30 years after the end of the Soviet Union, Central Asians, in particular the younger generation, are demanding that Islam play a more central role in public and private life. But the governments of Central Asia have adopted strict secular regimes, framing certain religious practices as non-traditional or extremist and labelling them as threats to national security. At the same time, forms of Islamic civil society, such as Hashar, or mutual help, Islamic microfinance, and aid to those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic are emerging, often promoted by prominent Islamic influencers via the social media. During our regional policy dialogue, we discussed a variety of topics with academics, civil society workers, grassroots activists from all across Central Asia, the EU and the US. We spoke about definitions and what Islamic charities and organizations consist of, who do they fund and how do they operate. For example, we spoke about Islamic charities and community organizations like As Salam Foundation, Elim Barzanbi, Committee of Muslims in Asia. Our panelists suggested dividing civil society Islamic actors in Central Asia according to sixfold typology consisting of Islamic NGOs, Islamic charities, Jamaats, mosques, muftazis, and mahallas. We defined each actor based on their distinct roles, resources, and capacity within the broader community. For example, Islamic NGOs are the most diverse in Central Asia in terms of status and activities. These organizations can be official or semi-official, locally, nationally or internationally active, and staffed by anything from a handful of people to thousands. Islamic charity organizations, on the other hand, function to collect and distribute aid, sometimes in the form of coalitions, often with support from donors in Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Qatar. According to participants, the most common activity they engage in is the construction of mosques throughout the region. Jamaats, on the other hand, are a form of group adhering closely to Islamic norms, meaning their organization and activities vary wide, while mahallas and mosques play a more local level importance in terms of traditional community organizations and representation. Mosques are increasingly important in the region as their number has grown from 400 to over 10,000 across the region today compared to the 1990s. Thank you for listening. If you're interested in this topic, you can always follow us on Twitter or listen to our podcasts about Central Asia and the financing of Islamic civil society.